It's Trevor from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you are hanging out with Gross Magazine. Let's get gross. So this is Jeremy with Gross Magazine. I'm here with Trevor of Black Dahlia Murder. How are you doing today, Trevor? I am pretty damn good, especially now that we're done. That's the best. How do you feel your set, man? I thought it was cool, man. Uh, at first, uh, I think the line was still outside for the first song or two, and you know people were shuffling in, and. Uh, that was cool, man. I mean, this this has been a huge opportunity for us to play in front of uh, new, new, recent fans. You know, I've seen a, a big response on the Facebook of people that have never heard us before. So, eight hundred sixty-seven thousand fans. Uh, yeah, I, I wish. I got a feeling half of those are robots, or you know what I mean. But Wait, Facebook. But even down. if it's half of them, I'll take it. That's what that's all it's in. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So my next question is probably one of the most important questions you'll be asked. Did you ever have to pay for that Buffalo Wild Wings? No. No, we did not. That was good. That was a good stroke of luck. Doesn't always happen that way. Get wild for free like that. <laughs> I like Buffalo Wild Wings, all right. I don't really like hanging out there. You know, I'm not much of a sports guy, so I don't really go for that whole sports bar thing. But, but uh, I like the wings, all right. Good for that. So, tell me your thoughts on Colorado legalizing marijuana. I think it's awesome. I think it's the wave of the future. People are going to finally realize, oh, nothing happened. The world didn't collapse, you know, didn't descend into poverty. Actually, selling it legally and taxing it, I think, is a genius thing, you know. And uh, hopefully it will, uh, you know, set a standard for things to come for other states. But uh, it's pretty exciting stuff for us weed smokers. In Michigan, we've had it decriminalized, you know. Not quite to, to the same level, but what it's still... Cool. Uh, well, I can, I can, I go. I tell the doctor that I have blood problems, and then I get legal weed. And when the cops pull me over, I can have up to an ounce on me or whatever. So it's pretty cool. But straight up legalizing everything, man, that would be great. Screw you, dude. Both well, you guys. Ryan Ashbach and your cool. viewers. <laughs> So you guys spend a lot of time on tour. What's the uh, craziest concoction you guys have ever had to make to eat on tour? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. There's a lot of, of improvising in Europe, man. There's a lot of, some of the stuff you get in your spread of uh, snacks and meats and things I don't even recognize, you know what I mean? So definitely eat some weird stuff. Some uh, some head cheese, I imagine, some of it was. Uh, Lots of sausage. Yeah, lots of sausage, lots of bread. In Europe, man, they're so serious about bread, like, I don't know what the deal is. They eat bread for breakfast, that seems like a pretty limp dick to me, man. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, we were just up at your merch table. What what gave you guys the idea for that box set that you have? Oh, man, well, I mean, having a, a, a physical copy that people want to... Sorry, I fucked this up. Turn, I turned it off! Anyway, we're back. The uh, ritual box set was basically a ploy to get people to buy the physical copy of the record in these modern times when anyone can just steal it, you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, tying everything together with the whole uh, black magic thing, you know, uh, Ouija board, uh, incense, stuff like that, was, uh, you know, just kind of amplifying the themes of the record and, uh, you know, it's a kind of cool thing that we came up with. And, uh, you know, it seemed, it seemed to be a success, so it's very, very cool. Alright, so tell me, if you took a shit in the woods and had nothing made of cloth or toilet paper, how would you wipe your ass? I guess I would try to get the leaves, but uh, not the like brown, the really brown crumbly ones, and not the ones with like the insect eggs on them either. Uh, one time I was playing Capture the Flag in the woods with my friends a long time ago, and uh, I had the shit like on the spot, you know? And I, I had to use not the actual flag you get when you, you know, win, but one of the boundary flags that was the halfway point. I had to wipe my ass with that. And uh, another thing you don't want to wipe your ass with are magazine pages. I've done that too. In times of desperation. No, it's just, it's so glossy, like no shit sticks to it. Yeah. So tell me, do you prefer your women on or off the rack? Off. But I'm not the guy that's afraid to go there. I won't go eating down there. I'm not that death metal, but... <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, you know, metal enough. I mean, whatever, you throw down the towel if it's real bad, you know? And it's heavy flow day. I'm not afraid. Some dudes are afraid to even go anywhere near it, but... 
you know, this is metal we're talking here. It's, yeah, it's fair enough, man. Get some blood on your dick, for Christ's sake. In a word, how would you describe your fans? Mongoloids. No, I'm just, just kidding. They're awesome. Uh, die hard. I'm, Two words, one word. Is it one word when it's die hard? I don't fucking know. Anyway, our fans are insane. They're great. Uh, I think they depend on us to never change as a band, to always be oh, okay. extreme, and uh, you know, uh, that's what we're gonna give them every time. You know, we're not gonna soften the music, not gonna put you know clean singing in it and anything like that. I think that uh, they see us as a band they can depend on. You know, I hope so. So it's customary with GMAG interviews to ask. <laughs> What's the grossest thing you've ever come across? Grossest thing I've ever come across? On tour, personally? Uh, I don't know, man. I guess it would have to be... It's a bathroom somewhere. Part of tour is that you're always pooping and peeing in, in bathrooms that aren't your own. And some of them are completely heinous and shit covered. And, uh... I guess it would be taking a dump in the third world. Because sometimes they just do it wrong. They have like a bucket where you're supposed to splash your, your pie hole with fucking water afterwards. So everybody is sticking their shit hand in this bucket. And it's just like, I just you never want to go side. home more than that moment, basically. Justice. Rough Justice. That's the name for the next uh, Steven Seagal movie. Isn't that dude like a cop? Like for real now? Because yeah, him just... and Shaquille O'Neal down in Miami yeah, or something. Wow. <laughs> Get some blood on your head, folks. Do it. Do it. <laughs> a little cameo by uh, our guitar player <laughs> for you. As he falls! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking turn the camera! He fell! Not fast enough. <laughs> Shit. Son of a bitch. <laughs> that was a fucking face plant if I ever saw one. That yeah, was right? awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's a fucking a couple of characters. What the fuck, Jeremy? He wrote these questions. All right. <laughs>